I want to, we, we, we saw firsthand the power of Cascade Delete last time when we got rid of everything in our, in our test database. So I want to take a few minutes again to, to, to talk about and to review the way Cascading Delete works. I'm going to use a little bit different example than the one we used to talk about it. And then we'll go back and we'll do it right. All right. Let's say we had this scenario. We had a sales rep. that was responsible for a certain group of customers. And those customers placed orders. All right, and we had that relationship there. Let's first talk about it, actually, let me rewind a bit. Let's first talk about it without the orders table in here. So the way that cascading delete would work is if I set up this foreign key relationship and said I wanted to cascade delete, if I deleted a sales rep, it would delete all the customers associated with that sales rep. Cascading delete always goes in the one direction, not the other direction. In other words, if I were to delete a customer, that would have no effect on the sales rep table whatsoever. All right, Because if I delete a customer, then that sales rep has to be around to service their other customers, right? Um, that is, uh, back a few years back when I taught the database class, good percentage of the people got that question wrong that says, if I, what would it mean if I set up cascading delete? They said just the opposite. You know, that if you delete a customer, it will delete their sales rep. No. If you delete the one, will it go out and delete the many? And again, you know, I usually uh, phrase this in terms of parent and child. You know, the one end, the one side is the parent, the many side is the child. If you delete the parent, are you going to delete the, the children? All right? And that's what cascading delete means. Cascading delete would mean that if I deleted the sales rep, it would um, take out the customers. Not cascading delete, the opposite of that is to restrict. And what that would mean is I would not be able to delete the sales rep as long as they had customers assigned to them. Keep in mind that this is a constraint that's built on the database level, which means it doesn't matter like how we try to delete that sales rep. It won't allow us to do that if I did not set it to cascade, if I set it to restrict. Now you might say, well, what if I do want to delete a sales rep? What would I have to do? You could write all kinds of applications to like be like a sales rep transfer, to transfer the Ohio customers from Bob to Mary if Bob quits or whatever. You could handle, you could give the user a way to handle those situations through the user interface, but the database is where you want to apply the constraint to prohibit deletion of people if they still have sales reps. I'm sorry, if they still have customers assigned to them, okay? You have to judge this on each case, right? It's on a case-by-case -case basis. In other words, I can't tell you, gee, always delete, always cascade delete, or not always cascade delete. Um, sometimes they talk about a dependent and an independent relationship. Um, in this case, um, there's an independent relationship, right? If a sales rep quits, there's still that customer still exists in the world, right? They're still out there and they still might be interested in buying stuff from you. So that's independent. An example of a dependent relationship would be if you had an order and a line item table where the order was like the order header information that on November 13th, Mike Zeller's placed an order and paid for it with his American Express card. And the line item might be the individual items that I've ordered. All right. The line items are a dependent relationship, right? You can't have a line item that's not associated with an order, right? Gee, someone ordered, you know, a hat. Well, who ordered the hat? What order is that line item associated with? That would be an example 
of a dependent relationship. And typically those kinds of things you would cascade. All right. So if you deleted an order, you'd delete everything about the order. You wouldn't leave like a line item out there hanging. Okay, so we saw, we didn't have uh, sales reps and customers last time. We had age categories and players. And we found out, because we had set the, that the cascade, that if you delete the sales rep, or I'm sorry, if you delete the age category, it deleted the players as well. Now, if more tables become involved, then the plot thickens. So let's go and add the orders table here. Let's imagine that customer number one, I'm sorry, sales rep number one, belongs to customer number 10 And customer number 10 has a couple of orders out in the database. If I go, and if this is set to restrict, and this is set to cascade, if I try to delete a sales rep, it will try to delete all the customers, and there's, there's sort of the cascading part, all right, just like cascading style sheets, you know, kind of travel down. The deletion would travel down too. So if I tried to delete Joe, it would say, okay, Smith is associated with Joe, so I'm gonna try to delete that customer. These orders are associated with customer Smith. I'll try to delete these orders as well. Notice I keep saying the word try. All right. If this was set to, to restrict, I would not delete these orders, which means I would not delete this customer, which means I would not delete that sales rep. So anywhere down the line of cascading deletes, if you hit a restrict constraint and there is data in that relationship, it stops the presses. And also, it, it is an all or nothing thing. So for example, if I deleted every one of my Pennsylvania sales reps, let's say I had a statement delete from sales rep where state equals Pennsylvania because I was closing my Pennsylvania operations or whatever. It would not delete one of them and not the other. In other words, if at anywhere through this chain of deletion there's a fail, all right, and is unable to delete a row in one of those tables, it doesn't delete any of them. All right, so that statement is taken as a unit. It either all succeeds or all fails. If you think about this and you think about like orphaning rows, that's the basis of this. When you establish a relationship, you can't orphan something. <laughs> so I can't have an order out there without a customer. So one of two things happens if I want to delete a customer. I either prohibit that deletion, and that's restrict, or I cascade deletion, which means I delete the order along with it. And same thing all the way down the chain. All right? Some databases offer the ability to null out a field. So for example, if uh, based on, on, uh, on constraints on the column, I might be able to delete the sales rep, and it will null out the sales rep in that field. It will sort of leave them unassigned until I go and manually assign them to something. So some days, databases allow that. But Access typically doesn't. I don't think SQL Server does either. Although, honestly, I can't recall that. All right. So let's go back and do deletes right. All right, let's go back and do deletes right. I'm not saying anything. And we'll set up, we'll, we'll, we'll load back up that, and we'll enter a few things in here, and we'll go in and we will 
set the constraint to restrict deletion instead of cascade deletion, and we'll go from there. One thing, uh, if you have not noticed the announcement, I graded the design. Um, I do want to talk to just about everyone now. Um, so if you can make a point to stop by the lab, <coughs> and I'd like to talk a little bit about your database design and, and other stuff. Um, no big deal, just, you know, it, it's something that I want to do because it's easier, I think, sometimes to say things face-to-face -face than to write a lengthy email. All right, let's go and open this up. Let's go into the database and add a few things back in. range ID of five, we lost four numbers. <coughs>
There we go. All right. So now, <coughs> notice if I delete this one, it'll let me delete them. Why? Because I don't have anyone in that age group. So there isn't the problem of there being a related row. So it's gone. Now, you might say, and you'd be correct, gee, I don't like the fact that is the second I clicked it, it was gone. It would be nice to be asked the question, are you sure you want to delete this? We'll come back to that. This one, though, if I remember right, I assigned Don to this age range. So if I click delete, boom, big, ugly error. All right. So there's two things we got to fix with this. All right. Number one is we got to fix it so that this doesn't happen. Now we could fix this a couple different ways, right? We could fix it by before you go out and delete it, we could check to see if there's any people out there associated with that age group. And if there is, then bail out on the delete. We could actually try to make the screen not enable that delete link if there were people associated with that age group. <coughs> we could write code that would go in and get rid of that delete link in the case of there being people associated with that um, age group category. Or we could just try and the delete and just handle the error gracefully. Generally speaking, that's the most straightforward way to handle this. I'm going to still allow them to try to delete something, and I'm not going to put any code in prior to the delete to check to see if there's any players. Hey, either it can delete it or it can't. If it can delete it, it's gone. If it can't delete it, it'll tell me. The problem is, is that I want to um, give a, a, a clearer error message than this. I want to give a, a nice more user-friendly error message for this. So, we've already seen how to do this, sort of. What are we going to do? Utilize the, uh, event handler. Utilize the event handler. And what do you suppose, what event are we going to write code for? Actually, it will be deleted, right? We're going to let it try to delete it. We're not going to do anything before it tries to delete it. We're going to let it give it a shot. And if it deletes it, fine. If it doesn't, we're going to report the error. So let's go and let's look at this. And as I scroll down for the grid view, I can click on item deleted equals in here's where wait a minute. yeah there's where I need to be on on row deleted not on item deleted my mistake equals and I'm going to click create new event and I'm going to put in, or it puts in for me, grid view one, row deleted. Again, by virtue of the fact that this is past tense, it means that it's already tried to do the delete. What's our code going to look like for this, for that grid view one, row deleted? Well, how do we know if it worked or not? Exception number of that E, 
event args is null. Okay, we're going to look at the grid view deleted event arguments. That is sort of the report. All right, that's the report back from the database. Did this work? What happened? Did this work? And specifically, if it worked or not is determined by the presence of an exception object. All right? So E is the report, the event deleted arguments, or the deleted event arguments, rather. And E dot exception is the exception. And either there's an exception there or not. So if E dot exception not equal to null, then what do we do? What does that mean, first of all, if the exception is not null? It means there is an exception, which means what? That there was a problem deleting it, right. that, that the deletion didn't happen. And again, remember, when I say the deletion happened, I mean any deletions that happen, any cascades, if there were other tables involved, no deletes happened. Uh, a delete statement like this succeeds or it fails. All right? So if there was an exception, I probably want to put a label up on the page. So I'll go into the page. And I'll put a label for the error. I'll call it label error. Label error text equals some user friendly error message. Now I could put. Can you just put E and then we'll tell them? Well, kind of. Would we just put E there? That would list out all the crazy stuff, wouldn't it? Well, if we put E there, if we literally put E there, remember, E is the grid view deleted argument. E is an object. And there's a lot of stuff associated with the object. All right? If we hit E dot we'll see all the stuff associated with it. How many rows were affected? So we could see how many rows were deleted. Maybe that would be beneficial. Um, we could see if there was an exception, if we handle that exception, keys, two string values. So we could use that object, but we wouldn't just use that object. So I'd probably say something like e dot exception dot two string. And that would take, and that would report the exception. What values would that let you know which row you messed up on? Would it return whatever value? Would which attribute? The Because there was a dot for a value one, too. Instead of using an exception, would that tell you which row specifically was messed up? No. This will show you what the arguments were in the delete. So this would tell me this would tell me what I was trying to delete, but it wouldn't necessarily necessarily tell me what failed. Okay. All right. We could use the exception object and display one of the properties of the exception object. Again, that probably isn't going to be very understandable to users. So I probably would want to write my own error message. I could use the exception object, though, associated with E. Um, also keep in mind, as we said before, more than 
likely, if I try to delete something and I can't, it's because of a foreign key issue. But there's all those kinds of goofy, unforeseen sort of issues that could be a problem. All right? I want to make sure that it's not one of them either. So I'm going to phrase my error message to say something like, <coughs> cannot delete probable cause. There are players for this age range. Now, there's one more thing that I have to do here. Redirect. Well, not redirect so much. I might redirect in other cases, but if there's a failure sort of associated with that, I have to tell the framework that I've handled this exception. All right? Because remember, someone's got to handle the exception. It's either going to be you or it's going to be the framework. If the framework does it, it's going to do it in probably the ugliest, most brute force sort of way that you could imagine. It's going to blow up and give an ugly error message that's neither going to be understandable by the user <coughs> and in some cases potentially could give information concerning the structure of your database that you don't necessarily want to make public. So I have to tell it that E exception handled equals true. This is the equivalent of saying, yeah, I got this one. All right? I've handled this exception. The framework does not need to worry about it. All right? So that's one thing that we have to do. All right? With this. So, again. You wouldn't want to put the exception handled before the label? Well, this, I mean, I'm sure because it's... In, in this case, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. We're, we're setting this property and we're displaying the message. This property will only... The framework won't look at this property until this whole function is done. Okay. So it doesn't really matter where we put that. Okay. All right, so let's go and run this. And if I go and delete or try to delete something... we get our nice user-friendly error message. Can't delete probable cause there are players for this age range. Now, I could do a whole bunch of things if I wanted to with this, right? I could redirect to a page that showed those players. All right? I could do that. And well, that could be kind of cool. All right? Let's do that, just for laughs. All right, why not? We got time. Let's make it so that I'm going to create a link that says click here to show all the players of that age range. All right. Let's, let's take a mental inventory of what we need to do to do that. Display. 
we should have saved that for like when I was finally wrapping something up. That could have been a nice ta-da. <laughs> We check for exceptions. If there's an exception, we display an error. What we want to do also is we want to display a link. And then we let the framework know that we've handled it. So right now, we're already doing this and this. So we just have to do this. All right? So we're going to have to make a new page. Right? We're going to have to make a page that shows, that shows what? The players in the age range. We're going to have to show players for a given age range. All right? And that's going to show the player's name and other information. And guess what? Maybe, let's say we did this. Let's say we accidentally entered in, created two age groups for 10 to 11. Right? One put, for one we put 10 to 11, and the other we put 10-11. Well, we want to consolidate everyone in one into the other. So I might want to go and create a link over to this page so I can see which people got assigned to the erroneous group, right? And then I could go in and adjust them and put them in the proper group. <coughs> and then I could go back and, and try to delete it again. All right? What am I going to need for this page to work? Data source. Pardon me? Data source. Data source? What else am I going to need? Grid view. What's this data source going to look like? It's going to be, what's the SQL statement that it's going to be? Select star from player. Where what? Player ID. Are we pulling up one specific player? Oh no, all of them. Where would be all? Because right, we're pulling up all of them. Are we pulling up all of them? Well, all the players from a specific age group. Okay, so what would the where clause look like then? So where age group ID. Right, where age group ID. Group ID equals question mark. All right. Where are we going to fill in that question mark from? Connection string. Connection string? Uh, no. Query I, string. I think you're a word off on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, query string. <coughs> query string. Yeah, there we go. All right. So in other words, the URL for this should be something like this, players by age dot ASPX question mark, age ID equals, and then we're going to fill in this. All right? So that's what the URL is going to look like for this. Now I'm going to make this page first. Well, when we go back into coding, I'm going to make this page first. And then I'm going to go into this piece. What does this link <coughs> need to look like that we're displaying? What does that link need to look like? Is that link going to be the same thing each time? It should really say dis display players in each group or something more specific. Well, it will say A. Let's think in terms of HTML. href equals what? In the text, you're right, it should say display players in age group so the text should be something that makes sense in display players in age group that you were trying to delete or whatever 
What should the URL be? What should the href be for this? My new page. Which is going to be what? Well, it's going to be players by age. ASPX, question mark, age ID equals, and then we're going to fill in the blank. What are we going to fill in the blank with? We're going to fill in the blank with the ID of the age range that we tried to delete. Where are we going to get that from? <coughs> the server. We're going to put it on the query string. Yeah, we're going to get it from something on the server. All right. This is my unknown. I don't know how to do this. All right. I kind of know, but I don't. I kind of don't know. All right, which, as I've said a million times, means I don't know, right? <laughs> but I can give a good guess of where I'm going to find it. I might not know exactly. Might not know exactly how to do this, but I can guess where I'm going to find it. Where does this code live? This code lives in the deleted event. By what mechanism does this event? get information about the deletion that just was attempted. I'll give you a hint. It's one of the letters of the alphabet. I'll give you a hint. It's among the first five letters of the alphabet. E. What is E? E is sort of the report. This is what happened. This is what we attempted. This is what happened. Was there an exception? What were the values that we tried to delete? And so on. All right? So, I don't know exactly how to do this, but I know I can grab that value of the key, or I'm pretty sure I can grab the value of the <coughs> ID that I tried to delete somewhere in E. And I'm going to take it on faith that I can do that. And we'll give that a shot. All right? It's almost impossible to teach everything that you're going to run into in a class. But half the battle is sort of getting a sense of like, where is the logical place to look? You know, earlier on in the semester, I coined the, there's a property for that, right? The thought there is, start thinking in object-oriented terms, all right? Yeah, that information probably exists somewhere for this to work. Otherwise, this wouldn't work, right? Someone better know what row we're trying to delete, all right? So, yeah, it's probably a property somewhere. Where does it make sense to look for it? Because you got a bazillion objects on each page, right? Well, in this case, the object that gives me information about the delete that just happened is that E object, the deleted event arguments. So that's the logical place to look. So part of the job of learning to be a developer and learning troubleshooting is learning like, not necessarily where everything is, but like where is the logical place to look for something. So that's what we're going to try to do. I'm going to create this page first. Then we'll try to create my delete link. And we'll try to do that correct. <coughs> Yes, you and a very high percentage of other students and even a percentage of professional developers. But we're going to shoot higher for that than that. At the very least, we're going to shoot for knowing the first part of the thing to type in so that you're looking at IntelliSense among one object instead of among 50 objects. You got it all, don't worry. A 
looking at this, the screen isn't appearing very bright. So I'm going to create that second page first. All right. I'm going to follow my own advice and do this in pieces. <coughs> okay. Why am I going to do that? Well, for a number of reasons. At least some of the time I practice what I preach. And this is definitely one time where I do that. It's useful in explaining, because then we get each <coughs> piece and we can understand things in sort of bite-sized chunks. Byte spelled with a Y, of course, because we're talking about programming. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's also good because then I can test one or two things at a time. All right. There's a concept in testing of unit testing and system testing. You know, and, and the units and the system are sort of whatever you define them to be. With unit testing, you're teaching one little, you're testing one little piece of the puzzle, and with system testing, you're testing to make sure all the pieces fit together. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to change my database. I'm going to do exactly what I said. I accidentally entered in two age range categories for 10 to 11. One I typoed, one I didn't. Now, if there was no person assigned to age range ID 6, I could just go and delete that one, right? However, if I try to delete it, I'm going to get an error, all right? And what it would be nice to do then is to click a link to bring up all the people in that age range, the erroneous one that was entered, so I can reassign them to the right age, age group. Okay, so that's our goal. That's what we're going to do. If we run this now, if I try to delete that, boom, I get the error. What I want to do is have a link to show all the people from that age group, all that age group. All right, so I'm going to go in and create a new file. I'm going to call it players. By age range. I'm going to go and I'm going to put my grid view. I'm going to put my data source. I'm going to configure the data source. something, we'll tell it at runtime which age range we want to see. Where are we going to get the value from? Query string. What query string field? Doesn't matter what we call it as long as we're consistent when we call it. And I'm going to say the query string field, field is age ID. All right. I'm going to test the query. We'll put in a 5, and there you go. Test the query, put in a 6, and there you go. So we got all that working. This, in a way, is also a form of unit testing. I'm te testing a little piece of it. 
Now I'm going to test the page. All right. I haven't made the link yet. So you might say to yourself, how can you test a page? You haven't made the link on the deletion page. Well, I could just go in and type in the URL, right? So I could go in, start this up, and I could say, I was looking for the refresh button. Oh, it's in now. There we go. I said it was going to be called age ID on the query string, so I'm going to type that in. Equals 5. Something didn't work. 6 maybe? Alright, what didn't work? I didn't, tell you I didn't bind them, right. Players by age range, it should be. Players by age. Dot ASPX. Question mark. All right, there we go. So it brought up all the people from age range of, of five. All right, with the, with the age range ID of five. And I can go and type in six. And I can test that. So the nice thing is, is let's imagine that you were working on a big project and you were each responsible for pieces of it. All right? One person could develop this. You might say, like, how could I divide up this project? Well, one person could develop this and test this this way, right? And then talk to the person that's doing the other page and say, the name of my page is players by age range. I'm expecting age ID on the query string. And that's all that other person would need to know in creating their link. Now, to be sure, when the day was done and both pieces were done, you'd have to make sure that they talked to each other, that there wasn't some misunderstanding and you called things by the wrong name or you passed, you know, a username instead of an age range ID or whatever. All right? But still, in that way, two people could work independently on this. One person could do their testing and say, yeah, my stuff looks pretty good. And then the other person, when their part of it is done, they can go and do that. Now, of course, invariably, you know, if the end product doesn't work, they're both going to stand there and point at each other. But at the very least, right, you've done some testing of the individual units before you've tested the whole thing together. Remember, when you have components talking to each other, when you have things talking to each other, um, it definitely increases the complexity and the potential places for, for things to go wrong, right? So component A could be wrong, component B could be wrong, or the manner in which A and B communicate could be wrong, all right? So if you have two things talking and they don't work, there's actually at least three reasons why they're not working. So it's good to test each one individually, and that sort of means that if you've tested each one individually and it seems right, you can sort of assume that, well, they're just not talking together, and you can work that out. All right. So now I'm going to go in 
and I'm going to set the link on this page. In addition to my label error, I'm going to make a hyperlink. And my text is going to be show players for age range you tried to delete. Now, what's my navigate URL? Well, it's going to be players by age range. Dot ASPX. Question mark. Age ID equals. And here's where we're running off into unknown territory. I don't know how to get that value in there. But you know what? I can fake it for a while. I can put in a 6 there. I'll just hard code a 6 because that's the one I'm doing my testing on. I'm going to make sure this part at least works and then I'll move on and try to do it for real. All right. Now, other thing I'm going to do is on my on row deleted method Or actually, I'm going to make this hypergrid hyperlink um, invisible. And I'm also going to make it invisible here. And if there's an error, I'm going to make it visible. Yes. You need to set it to invisible in the properties of its own, though, then, don't you? Yeah, I, I did that. Oh. I did that a second ago. All right. Now. than I was 10 minutes ago. All right? I've done 95% of this without learning the one unknown that I don't know how to do. And that is figuring out how to make this link really work and really be dynamic and really contain the ID of the thing that we're trying to do. <coughs> but I was able to do this in pieces. All right? And I've made a lot of progress with this. Now I just have one hurdle to cross. Well, let's make sure it works first, but now I get, after I finish that, I'll have one hurdle to cross. All right? And then, what can I do? I could spend some time researching on the Internet. I could go ask a more experienced developer. I can have a lot of options of what to do at this point. But the point is, is I've done it incrementally. I haven't tried to do everything, all right, and have a bunch of problems and nothing working and nothing doing anything at all. All right? So let's run this. So I'm going to go and try to delete number six. It fails. Show players for the age range you tried to delete. There we go. All right. Everything is working except for the one thing. And the one thing is that I'm always looking for age range six. I just need to figure out how to get to the stuff that I really want. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Not bad. All right. I, I've had students in the past say something along the lines of, um, you know, I, I don't know how to do this piece of it or that piece of it. You don't always have to do all the pieces all at once. You can pick and choose and do pieces of it. 
and get the, get the easy stuff or the stuff that you're pretty clear on out of the way and then you can go back and clean up the other stuff later. All right. So what am I going to do now? If I was really concerned that I wouldn't be able to figure this out, what I would do is I would say, well, I don't want to try this before 11.30, so let's just go to lab now. But I think I can figure this out. Let me Google grid view event arguments and see what I get. Because, again, that's the most likely place for this information to be. Right? This has the information about what just happened. All right, so I'm thinking that I, I bet I can find what I tried to do. All right, in looking at this, gets an ordered list gets an ordered dictionary of key field names pairs for the deleted record. That sounds to me like something worth pursuing, right? Because what did I try to delete? I tried to delete a certain key from this table. The keys property, and there's some examples here, The key fields for the deleted record are this, and they loop through. gives me a good idea what to look. I'm going to use another tool in figuring this out. I'm going to use the debugger, right? Why am I using the debugger? I'm using the debugger because that allows me to x-ray into and look at the value of certain things. So let's go and run this. Let's go and try to delete number five. All right, right there, here I am. Oops, I didn't want to do that. This E object has keys. <coughs> has one key in it. As a value. That was the first row you clicked, also, right? Yes. I wonder if you click the second row, is it going to change the. Well, we could observe that. Age range description is a non-key field. All right, that's not what we want. We don't want to delete by age range description. But if we look up here, what was the result view? We're getting there. Let me go in. So it's not in the values. The values, remember, show non-key stuff, and that showed the age range description. 
So we're going to look in the keys. Results view. Ah, age range ID. Values. Five. We have a winner. That is what we want to get to. Now the question is, is how do we get to it? All right, that's the big question, right? How do we get to that? Let's, let's make sure that we have written down where this is. This is part of E. It's part of keys. And it's part of values. So let's see if we let's see if that's enough information for us to get this. Let's make a string for age ID. E dot. Keys dot values. values all right doesn't like that All right, what is values? Values is a iDictionary object, or is part of an iDictionary object. So let's go back to Google. those values are in. So values is another I collection object.
Let's see what that does for us. I'm not ready to declare success yet. Success yet, but you should have put it to a label or something. That'll work, but as well, will as will debug. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Okay, string is empty. <coughs> All right. So I'm not doing something correct. Does it have a value yet? Oh, I guess it's it, it does have a value yet. The, the thing is I'm not ac accessing as correct. Let's have a race. I am going to post this example as it is now. Then I'm going to go to lab and I'm going to try to fix it. All right. I invite you to try to race me in trying to fix it. We've given you this far. We'll see who we can come up with. We need to bring up a value, right? We don't. You don't need it to switch the page correctly. You just want a value. Yeah. If you get the value, I can do the. I can do the rest. All right. See you in, on your on your mark. Go. Get set. Go. That's the way you're doing it. One question. Yeah. So far, with the way, obviously with the exception handling, we're trying to give them a nice user-friendly mm -hmm. display and we've been using labels. Yeah. Uh, with this being ASP.NET, could we also employ something like a uh, alert box, message box? Uh, to an, an alert box is problematic. Because remember, you are that uh, an alert box pro uh, pops up server side. I'm sorry, alert box pops up client side. Okay. So you would write, need to write server side code to pop up an alert box. As a general rule, most of the things that I've seen, I mean, most code that I see lately, sort of steers clear of the modal and f for favor of putting it on the screen and styling it in a certain way to make it obvious. I would so. You, you know, the answer to can you do it is yeah, you can do almost anything. The answer of should you do it is like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. And, and the problems involved with it is you need to write some server side code to fire off a JavaScript function when the page loaded to pop up an alert. 